hola guys to the bame hola hola so in this video we'll be attempting to solve first order homogeneous difference equations and here i presented the definition briefly and two nice examples to go along with it okay so let's jump straight in so let's start with a nice example the first one suppose we're given the difference equation it looks like this yt equals alpha times t minus one with initial condition at the at at t equals 0 for y 0 equals 10 okay as you see so what do we do from here and how do we solve it well let's let's just let's just take from from basics okay what we're really doing substituting t equals 1 let's try t equals 1 what do we get here we would get y1 equals alpha times y0 okay seems fine and then replacing y0 with 10 we get 10 alpha for y1 great what happens if we try t equals 2 well, we will get y2 equals alpha times y1. And notice we can actually substitute the y1 value, y1 solution, which was 10 alpha, into that equation. So we'll get alpha times 10 alpha, which, which presents us with 10 alpha squared. Seems nice. Let's try y3. So now we've got y3 equals alpha times y2. Again, replacing y2 there, we're going to get alpha times 10 alpha squared, which is 10 alpha cubed. So hold on. I mean, where we're going here, so really, we're just trying to formulate a solution in terms of yt. What do, can yt be equivalent to? Well, we know is that the power 3 and 2 represents to the subscript y2 and y2 uh, and 3 for y, respectively. So all I can really say, that means if I put t there, we're going to have yt equals 10 times alpha to the power t. Makes sense. And that's the solution, guys. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. Okay guys, let's consider one with a constant now. So as you can see, we have yt equals alpha times yt minus one plus two. So how do we do this? Well, let's go back and try and do the same thing we did last time and just replace t of one. Okay, so what happens if we put t is one? We get y1 equals alpha times y0 plus two. Okay, seems okay. Now let's try y2. So t equals 2 so we get y2 equals alpha times y1 plus 2 that's fine again but this time we have y1 just like the previous one let's substitute the y1 equation in and then we get this equation as you see alpha times alpha y0 plus 2 all in a bracket plus 2 simplifying this and um, expanding and simplifying we should get alpha squared y0 plus 2 and you probably noticed that i factorized 1 plus alpha out You'll see why in a minute if we if we find it if we do, if we find another iter iterative example again. So consider y three now. What's happening? Well, we get alpha y two plus two once again. Now here it comes. This is where the magic happens. Let's put y two back in. So we're gonna get a really big nasty equation to deal with. So guys, <laughs> I know you ain't looking to that, but you have to do that. So expanding this and simplifying, and this might take a while, we should get this conclusion. Hmm, what do we notice about this one? Well, we can see straight away that the y3, the 3 on the power of the alpha, corresponds with the 3 on the y. So we can say instantly that yn is equal to alpha to the power n y0. That's fine. How about the second part? Compare it to y2 and y1, what's happening? Well, you notice that it's increasing each time by alpha and it's raised in, and the power is raising by one every time think of the value one as alpha to the power zero so in fact it's actually a summation we're summing up um, terms of alpha from one from one period back so if we had y4 we expect the next one to be one plus alpha plus alpha squared plus alpha cubed so we can instantly say that this is a sum of um, alpha to power k from k equals 0 to t minus 1 k equals 0 represents that this is 1 and t minus 1 means it's one time back and here we are okay so now things are getting serious what happens at this stage okay so we're not we're not used to seeing this kind of equation well let's consider taking alpha equals 1 for example what happens to that equation well it's actually quite easy when ha when alpha is 1 then the first term becomes just y0 and then we have plus 2 now Replacing the alpha as 1, we're going to have a sum of 1 to the power k from k equals 0 to t minus 1. Actually, there's how many terms is that together? Well, we have t minus 1 plus an extra 0 term, which is a 1 term. So, in fact, we have t terms. 
So actually the sum of t1s is just t. So the conclusion is y0 equals y equals yt equals y0 plus 2t. Now, how about if alpha was less than 1? What happens? Well, it's kind of the same actually. Here we're going to have yt equals alpha t y0. That's, that's okay. So same like the original equation. However, notice that the second part actually becomes a geometric series. Now you need to recall that when when the when alpha is less than one, when it's a fraction, when it's a fractional term beneath uh, below one and or well, between minus one and one, we can use this relationship and change it into the the expression you see now, one minus alpha to the power t over one minus alpha, assuming that you set the summation from zero. Mm -hmm. So this extra part is something we need to learn the the fractional part. Well, what does this tell us? Well, that's really, this means that we're going to get a finite solution. So the sum of terms would actually give you a finite solution if alpha is less than 1. However, if we were to set t to infinity, what would happen? Well, we can notice that because alpha to the power t, because alpha is less than 1, if you have a power, if you if you put a power, attach a power to a fraction which is less than 1, if you, let's just try it right now, put a half to the power of 9, what do you get? you get a pretty damn small number, 0, 0.00 something. Now how about you try an even bigger number? Again, you're actually approaching zero. So in fact, powering a fraction less than one would approach would make the number approach to zero. So that's why the first term is zero. The second term, well, that's the same thing. Alpha to power t is also zero. So in fact, we're left with two times one over one minus alpha, and that would be it. Okay, guys, so this is uh, my two examples I did. Hope this helps, and um, let me know in the comments below if any other further suggestions. And, well, I'll present a more difficult example, so subscribe, guys, and um, give me some feedback if you want me to carry on using, um, uh, what's this called again? Yes, a PowerPoint presentation or a whiteboard. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye.